Welcome. Welcome to my talk uh, about uh, developer portals as products. Uh, thank you very much for watching this recording. Uh, it's, um, I hope I'm going to do it as nice as in, I did it in Paris. Uh, in Paris, obviously, with an audience, it's always, um, yeah, it makes it a little bit easier because you have somebody to interact with. But I hope, nonetheless, that this is going to be a good experience for you. If you have any questions or any uh, remarks or anything like that, Feel free to reach out to me. You can find me on LinkedIn or uh, on Twitter, although I don't spend too much time there anymore. OK, so but with, um, with that very, very short uh, pre-introduction, uh, let's start with introduction. Um, you have chosen to join uh, this presentation about um, uh, developer portals that also should be products just the same way as I think that APIs should be products. Uh, there's a, yeah. Um, so, and, um, but to, to start this story, I'd like to take you back, way back in time, uh, to a long, long time ago, when um, I used to organize events in the Drupal community. Um, I think it was like 14 years ago or something, or, or, or 12 years ago. Um, I organized together with uh, Laura Vash and um, uh, Michaela um, from Microsoft, or oh, Michaela. Craft. Oh, I, I reorganized a, um, oh no, God, I need to go and look it up. Uh, we organized a Drupal CXO, which was uh, an event um, for people and leadership of Drupal companies where we would come together and talk about different topics. And we had done a couple of different ones. We had done one about uh, services and you know how to run your business and really, really good conferences. And then we, we, we decided to the next one, which was Drupal CXO on products. And uh, that was, uh, we're going to do it in Rome. Amazing setting, amazing group of people, really, really awesome start. Uh, but then as we started the conversations, because this is an open, uh, like an unconference uh, conference. So like the, the program gets defined by the audience. Um, and as we started, there was this really weird thing happening that Every conversation, every session almost ended up in a, but what is a product really? And like, an, and what really is the definition of a product? And uh, so, so that was one of the, it was also an interesting event, but it was not as useful as the other events that we did. So, and with, with that as a backdrop, um, uh, and maybe as a bit of a quick challenge to what is really a product when we're talking about APIs as products? And then also, what is a product when we talk about APIs as a developer portals as products? Um, uh, with, with that as a backdrop, um, I'll bring you this presentation that explores some of this confusion and some of these concepts and, and tries to give a couple of answers. And then also explains why um, this is important for uh, developer portals. Let me burn myself on to not disturb. Okay, so, and um, in the, the, the sphere of, of the end of years, I've got a presentation with packages and with trees. <laughs> and uh, actually, uh, maybe as a first question, um, is a product something that is packaged or is it more something that has a life cycle? Uh, this may be first thought-provoking question. Um, but very, very short, who am I? What am I doing here? Christoph von Sommer, I'm the CEO of Pronovix. Um, I'm um, a bioengineer by education. And in my free time, I spend a lot of time in the garden um, growing apples and pears and figs and a bunch of other stuff, um, different varieties, building ecosystems um, and platforms, actually, platforms for, for growing for growing fruits. But this this is kind of like um, the mindset that I try to bring the, the, the bridge between the API community and uh, the, the living world, uh, where ecosystems and platforms are all, all over the place. Um, so we, I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm the CEO of Pronovix, which is a consultancy that's specialized in developer portals. That's all we do. We've got a, a full focus on, on creating developer portals uh, using open source technology. Got UX services, technical writing, a whole shebang. But with, with that very short introduction, um, uh, uh, I, I don't want to spend too much on the commercials, but just so that you know who I am, where I come from. Um, uh, I'd like to invite you to uh, go and have a look at API the Docs, which is 
uh, a free community where everybody's welcome who wants to learn more about developer portals. We had the API the Docs track in Paris, um, which was, uh, I would say, a really big success. Um, like full rooms, um, really interesting talks about um, the, um, about the Dev Portal Awards uh, with members from the jury, uh, people that have won awards. Well, go go and check it out. There's more more events coming also next year. Uh, we also organize the Dev Portal Awards, uh, which is an award where we celebrate the best developer portals in the world. Everybody's welcome. It's um, um, it's not. It's you know it's an open community uh, with an independent jury, uh, so definitely go check it out. Also to see who won this year, and um, yeah, now I'm really done with <laughs> the, the 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 things that I would love you to to have a look at. Um, so let's talk a little bit about this this uh, thing APIs sh or this statement APIs should be uh, should not be projects. Um, why is that? And what is it really that we mean when we talk about APIs as product? So when, when we're managing APIs as projects, there's a couple of things that go wrong. First of all, um, uh, projects have a start and end date, which means that um, you know, there's only limited, well, typically, uh, there's only a limited period of time that people will be spending efforts on, on improving um, the API. And um, uh, what happens then is that there's um, security and reliability issues that typically pop up. Because if you, for a long time, don't maintain an API, or if you don't keep look at it once in a while, at least, um, or probably you will be doing that. But if you don't keep a, a, a constant focus on improving the API, um, you're probably going to get security and reliability issues on top of the, the, the feature gap that is developing between what your customers really want from your product and what you're providing. Uh, so there's typically, there's going to be issues with the business success you're getting with your APIs. And then um, what's different when you do an API as a product is that you, you get this living thing that's evolving and that uh, you can keep on working on improving the business value and uh, making sure that you get ROI uh, from, uh, from your APIs. Similarly, um, what's wrong when you run a DAF portal as a project is that um, because Dev portals are also interfaces, they're the interfaces for all your interfaces. Um, they're very similar in that um, if you uh, don't uh, don't keep focusing on improving that, there's going to be a gap between your existing business strategy and the strategy that your Dev portal is executing on. So make, to make sure that your Dev portal is really helping your business and is staying coherent with your um, business strategy, again. It's better if you if you not look look at it as a project like you know we just implement this thing and then we're done. But you you keep thinking about how to keep on improving it and developing it further. Um, because if you, as I said, like if you don't um, treat your developer portal as a product, um, probably you're going to have uh, problems with business and uh, developer documentation. This is typically what goes wrong. Is that um, if there's nobody watching, if you just say like, well, here's here's a dev portal, just um, publish whatever you have, and, and nobody's actually looking at the whole and trying to improve it. Um, for sure, the business documentation is going to be really bad, uh, and and most likely even the developer documentation will have issues. And um, and because of that, you'll get a disconnect with your business. Um, and a really big, important, hairy problem is that you'll get trust issues because people see a low quality dev portal, which means that probably your APIs are not very good, which means that they will won't use your APIs. Again, also security issues can be a problem also with your dev portal. So what is different when you run a dev portal as a product is that um, uh, you, you know, there's opportunities for better alignment with your business. Um, maybe you can make new revenue, although be careful with that. It's not always that easy. Uh, typically, most API programs are complements to existing other businesses. Um, um, so you, know, you have to set the expectations, right? Um, but you, you definitely will be able to use it as a developer marketing tool. So you might get marketing payoff. Um, it might help you with creating a positive developer brand. And um, hopefully, if everything goes right, you also get uh, true cost savings through, uh, through digital transformation, um, either on the inside or the outside of the organization. Now, let's start with some of the controversial statements. 
if you're using somebody else's product, there's a greater chance that you're running a project. What do I mean by that? If you just bought a developer portal product or an API management tool that has a developer portal product included in it, just like a SaaS tool, if, if you are not paying attention to that and if you are not conscious about it, there's a very, very good chance that you're not going to invest the necessary energy uh, that is required to get a good documentation, like, you know, get good technical writing, get a good um, business strategy, um, representation, you know, you, 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 it's very, very likely they will end up with something subpar. Um, it's, um, yeah, it, it's so easy for people to think that, you know, oh yeah, we need a dev portal, let's just buy one. And then, you know, curse the tool when it doesn't deliver the thing. The thing is that um, uh, tools don't solve problems, it's people that use tools that solve problems. So if you um, if you get a tool, you also need to spend the energy and the efforts on, on becoming successful with that tool. And, um, uh, and here's a maybe slightly controversial, but something to just to push a little bit, because for the most part, Dev Portal's success, like having a successful developer portal, is not so much about the features that you have. It really is about how well do you fit um, the um, uh, how well do you fit the um, the developer portal to your business needs and your strategic needs of your organization, and um, uh, your features are probably essential. A few key features will be essential in getting a good fit, like certain integrations uh, with like your partner onboarding or certain integrations with your billing system for monetization or um, automation for, for, for um, uh, automated documentation publishing. Some of these individual features might be core and essential for your business, but what features are essential probably depends on your context and how you're using a developer portal and what you're trying to do with it. So just having all the features is not going to get you a good dev portal. This is another thing. Like we, we sometimes see people come to us say, oh yeah, we want a dev portal and we want a community. And it's like, okay, that's that's nice, but do you have a community manager? And then often the answer is, oh, actually no. Then probably you don't want to start a community because without a community manager, you're just going to get uh, an echo chamber for people saying bad stuff about your business. Um, so th th that's what I mean. Like features are not the, the cure all end all. They're just the start of the thing that you then have to go and work with. Um, also, developer portals are social technical programs. They are not an implementation project. What I mean with that is that um, all the successful developer portals that uh, I've seen, there's um, a, a core team uh, that is working with the developer portal hands-on day-to-day. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of people from across the organization that are interacting with them to make the content on the portal as good as they possibly can make it. And um, I said the content because this is this is like this is where it most of the time fails. If your central developer portal team is purely focused on dev portal features, again, you know, you're not going to get good content because good content requires a lot of interaction with different stakeholders, with subject matter experts, uh, with business people, with salespeople, with you know, with with marketing people from across your organization to really turn um, that developer portal in the, the awesome asset for your business that it can become. And that's why it is a social technical pro uh, program where people and tools work together and improve each other as they keep on iterating and developing into, into better, a better solution for your business. And um, uh, that means that you cannot delegate your dev portal roadmap to... Um, to uh, like a SaaS product, because if you if you say our roadmap is all about the features that are being implemented and that's all, then uh, you're not going to again you're not going to be doing the content. You, you start hearing the story like there's a little bit of a repetition here, <laughs> but this content, um, you know, working together with um, the technology and the content together, that's that's really essential. Working on the UX information architecture and so on and so on so that you, you create something that is actually fulfilling the business function that it needs to do. And um, 
Another way to look at this question maybe is, is not necessarily about product versus project, but about project versus product mindset. What is the different in mindset you need to run a successful product? And I think that's that's where the real, really juicy and interesting concept come from. The first was more of what can go wrong. These are the things that you, you should be looking for to, to do a successful developer portal program. Um, and uh, the, these, these ideas came from, uh, I got this, actually I got the, the idea for this talk, I got from reading a blog post from uh, some friends from the Drupal community, uh, phase two. They're, uh, yeah, actually I think, um, some of their people were there or at that conference in Rome, actually, because back then they had a product in Drupal uh, that they were working on. Um, but they, they recently they published this blog post um, about uh, the difference between project mindsets and product mindset. And uh, where in project mindset, it's all about this cost scope time triangle where you're trying to find the right optimum between the three that fits for you and your business. Where in, in a product mindset, it's it's much less of a zero-sum game. It's more of a continuous development cycle and iteration cycle where you have an investment that is providing a certain value um, that is giving you the reason to do a new investment. And you get this continuous cycle that keeps on iterating and improving uh, a product until, of course, it, it ends its, the end of its life cycle. And it's a very, very different mindset. And in a blog post, talked about, I think it was five um, differences in mindset or mindset shifts that um, happen when you're switching from a project way of thinking to a product way of thinking. The first one is thinking from the outside in, meaning that um, you, when you want to launch a successful developer portal product that is going to help your business um, to to, to reach some sort of developer success, whichever success that is, um, you need to think about what your customers, your API customers, which will be developers or, or um, people that are leading API developer teams, they're looking for some sort of integration, what they need from you, and to think from that perspective in also how you architect uh, your developer portal and, and how you structure the information. Uh, so don't just publish a dev portal with here's 200 APIs and they're categorized by our departments and the, our departments have names that nobody completely understands because this is all mumbo jumbo and it's grown from some crazy acquisition spree. That's not useful. Nobody is looking for that. They are looking for jobs to be done that uh, they want to do with your products. Uh, so you have to make that easy for them and you need to think from the outside in. Um, this is advice that Apigee has been giving for a very, very long time also in, in the API space. Um, next um, uh, advice they give is um, you need to embrace a continuous product life cycle. So you don't look at this as a, okay, this year we're doing a dev portal and then, you know, we just put it in maintenance mode. You have to be thinking about, okay, so we, we do an initial MVP, then we learn what is working in our ecosystem. We learn where we can, where we can make money with our community or, or what is providing value for our community and what is helping us to achieve our business goals. And then we do the next investment. And then you, know, you, you do this iterative process where uh, you keep on improving what you're delivering to your community instead of just a big bang and then boom. And you know. um, also you need to measure the value of your product um, uh, and, and not just the scope. So it's, this is not about measuring how much, how cheap you get all your features. This is about measuring um, how, what is the best way of creating value for your business? And maybe you don't even know what that value is going to be when you start with your developer portal in your API program. Um, but uh, you, you need to be continuously learning and evolving what you're doing so that you get a better, you know, a better fit for your market and keep on evolving uh, what you're delivering to your community so that it can, it can grow in value instead of just rot on a shelf somewhere. Um, Together with that, you also need to do experimentation because if you don't do small experiments, you can't learn what, what are the ways for you to provide value for your community. And this is a big difference between projects, uh, project mindset where you, it's all about like reducing risks and trying to avoid risks and uh, towards a more of a, 
a calculated risk taking where you make small bets and see if any of them pay off so you can then reinvest in them and keep keep on evolving uh, the product you provide and then uh, i think this is the last one um, um uh, calculating product investment versus just the project cost is um, uh, figuring out what is the investment you're doing and then what is the ROI that is that you're expecting and how you're going to get to that ROI and then um, you know adjusting your investments to to match the ROI that you you're learning that you can get out of out this uh, out of this technology and, and this um, this product that you, you're putting on the market. So all of this this is exactly why we're doing develop portals the way we do it um, and this is for a short pitch just because i have to give a little pitch but um obviously <laughs> but um uh, we build developer portals that we use our platform for and then we can evolve it to become exactly what you need so we have an agile team set up that can iterate together with you so that you can focus on your your content and your internal or external community while we focus on uh, the technological implementations of those few features that you do need so that we can support those experiments that you're doing with your business. And um, that just leaves me just, you know, just don't just buy a product to just let it die. I, I don't, and that doesn't mean that um, SaaS products are necessarily bad. That might be right for you if you have, uh, if you're very clear about what you are trying to achieve and it's, it's really pure, you know, providing keys or something like that and, and API documentation, then that might be the right thing for you. But if you're, if you're, what the, the thing you should definitely not do is to just buy something and then just let it die. So if you are using a SaaS product, um, uh, or if you're choosing to work with a company like us, or if you're trying, to, or if you're choosing to build something in house, whichever of the three you do, you should think about like how are we going to keep on iterating and improving this thing. Um, and um, yeah, well, but whatever, because whatever you do, you should be investing in this living system um, because you're growing an ecosystem. You're, you're building a platform to grow ecosystems. And that means that um, you, you can't just walk away from that. You, have, you know, it's like a plant. You have to, like, if you have a, a house plant, you have to keep watering it. Um, if you have, if you're growing fruit trees in your backyard, you have to keep um, trimming them and, and, you know, uh, uh, like making sure that if you want good fruits, you 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 need you need to maintain them. Uh, and similarly, if you want to be successful with your API program, one of the most important investments you can do is to invest in a good developer portal that is a living thing, that's a living interface for your community. And um, with that, I would like to wish all of you uh, a very very happy end of year. Um, for those that celebrate Christmas, um, or if you have your New Year on the first of January, uh, or if not, um, I you know whichever it is, uh, I wish you um, a, a great time of introspection and uh, happiness and joy. Um, also, if you're watching this after Christmas, <laughs> I wish you all of that. Maybe you have another opportunity to have that. And um, I hope to see you at one of the next API Days conferences. Or, you know, give me, give me, send me an email or a message. Uh, always happy to chat uh, to talk about how maybe also you could work on, on more of a product uh, way uh, for your developer portal. And uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Have a lovely rest of the day.